welcome to a new episode of Superhero Deep Dive. I, as always, am your host Jason, and I have a good episode scheduled for you today. Um, I have a lot of viewer requests, or listener requests, so I am working right down my list. Um, today, it's going to be Saturn Girl, so let me get my disclaimers out, and we'll get into it. Um, now, the information is pulled from different sources across the internet and may or may not be completely complete, but they do give a really good insight on the current superhero. Also, you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter under Super Deep Dive, and I use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. Um, you can catch me on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive. I love it if you would subscribe, uh, comment, like, I don't know, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, comments, critiques, requests for future episodes, I am all ears. And you can email me directly at B, the number four, it all, so B for it all at yahoo.com. And you can catch me every Tuesday and Thursday on Outworld Fleet Radio. Their website is www.un-con-vegetal.com forward slash radio. And that is every Tuesday and Thursday throughout the day. Alrighty. So with all that being said, um, yes, I have had a lot of requests lately uh, let me see here i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten requests so it is awesome i am going right down my list um in fact i had one earlier today that i am writing down right now okay anyways um got this going now, if you are paying attention on YouTube, um, I have been told to split up my videos, which is basically the podcast with the slideshow, into two parts. So, um, if there is like a little gap in the in the audio, it's just because of that. So, let me know what you think. Does it work? Should I just keep it one long format? Um, podcast shouldn't be in or shouldn't be affected that much so yeah <laughs> with that said let's get into saturn girl all right so her real name is irma ardine and she's got like numerous parts to her to her origin but they all kind of fit in together um now during the silver age of comics 30th century Earth is a member of the United Planets and home to its military branch, the Science Police. The most talented telepath among a race of powerful mentalists, Irma left her homeworld of Titan to join the Science Police as a teenager. However, during her flight to Earth, an assassination attempt was made on the life of fellow passenger and billionaire R.J. Brand. Using her powers of telepathy, Irma discovered the plot and with the help of two other teenagers on board, Lightning Lad and Cosmic Boy caught the assassin and saved Brand's life. At Brand's urging, she adopted the persona of Saturn Girl and joined Lightning Lad and Cosmic Boy in founding the Legion of Superheroes, an organization of teenage heroes forced or forced <laughs> formed to honor the legacy of Superboy. Now, they traveled back to the 20th century to give him a place on the team after he passed their test. When Lex Luthor and the Legion of Supervillains were about to kill Superman, Saturn Girl offered to die in his place, although a trick by Superman made Saturn Queen save her. Um, now, as a Legionnaire, Irma gained a reputation for self-sacrifice. Just prior to the leadership elections of 2975, she learned that a legionnaire would die during an attack on Earth and decided to take on that responsibility herself. Wow. Like, that's kind of crazy. Alright, so using her telepathy, Irma forced the other legionnaires to vote her leader and then ordered them not to use their powers during the attack. But Lightning Lad defied her orders and took her place in death. Distraught over his selfless act of devotion, Irma vowed to do all in her power to bring him back. A method was soon developed which could revive Lightning Lad, but only at the cost of another member's life. 
Irma again interfered in the process to ensure hers was the life taken. But her plan was foiled by Prody, the telepathic shape-shifting pet of Chameleon Boy. Prody admired Irma and tricked her so that it, it could take her place. And upon Prody's death, Lightning Lad was restored. Despite this series of events, Irma's leadership was highly valued in the Legion, and her position as leader, despite its means of acquisition, was allowed to stand. She earned a second term the following year as leader of the Legion. Saturn Girl was the first female comic book character to head a group of superheroes, which is pretty awesome. Um, now romantically, Lightning Lad, whose real name is Garth Rand, had pursued Irma for some time, but she had repeatedly rebuffed his advances, and after he sacrificed his life for her own, she understood the depths of his feelings and came to realize that she returned them. After dating for almost 10 years, Garth proposed, proposed marriage, but Irma initially rejected his offer due to a legion rule which forced married members to retire. Sometime after consulting with their mentors on Titan, however, Irma relented, but the couple's retirement was short-lived. A few months after their marriage, war broke out in which all active legionnaires were captured and the reserves were forced into action. Irma's telepathic skills were instrumental in the Legion's eventual victory, and as a result, the rule-barring uh, rule married members was repealed. The Ranses returned to active duty until Irma gave birth to their son, Graham, after which they both retired in order to devote their energy to him. Which, which that's fair. I mean, you can't blame them for that. Unbeknownst to the couple, Graham had a twin. Wait, how was this unbeknownst? She... She gave birth! Like... Whatever. Graham had a twin that was stolen at birth by Darkseid and transported into the past, where he was transformed into the monstrous Validus. Um, and this was referenced in Tales of the Legion of Superheroes Annual 3. Now, um, Validus fought the Legion on numerous occasions and even killed one of the comrades, the first Invisible Kid but was eventually returned as a normal infant by his parent, or to his parents by Darkseid at Irma's insistence. So, did she just, like, nag him to do it? I, I don't know. I don't know, but it happened. So, Irm, Irma believed, or Irma briefly rejoined the Legion again in 2987, when Universo took control of the Earth and hypnotized and imprisoned many heroes, including her. So did he force her to reach? I don't know. I don't know. This is crazy. But Irma's powerful mind broke free and eventually broke Universo's hold over Earth and forced him unconscious. It was then that she realized how much the Legion was in her blood. And she rejoined, this time without Garth, who was enjoying life as a father and house husband. <laughs> During the five-year gap, Earth's government became hostile towards the Legion, and Garth became incapacitated from the Validus Plague, which ravaged his native Winath. Disillusioned by the government and feeling needed for more at home, Irma resigned from the Legion for the last time in 2990. Returning to Winath, um, she and Garth took over running a Winathian lightning ring plantation, which became quite prosperous. Using their newfound wealth, Irma and Garth replaced their superheroism with simple but necessary helping of others, feeding the galaxy suffering more from hunger than from supervillains. When the Legion reformed in 2994, the Ranzas helped them out but did not rejoin. Instead, they enlarged their family with the birth of daughters Daisy and Dorrit, who inherited Irma's telepathic abilities. So this lady had two sets of twins. That is crazy. That... Ow. <laughs> She's popping out doubles at a time. That sucks. Alright. But congratulations to them. Two sets of twins awesome. I wish I had one set of twin. Um, but then... I realized how much work one child was. So I, I just don't think I could have handled it. Much less two sets. Like having to do it again. But you never know. Alright. 
After the reboot of the Legion of Superheroes in the Zero Hour series, so this is after Zero Hour, um, which I should do a series on that, but Irma remained known as Saturn Girl and a founder of the Legion along with Cosmic Boy and the renamed Livewire. Now, um, at this point, Zero Hour kind of rebooted the universe. So, some stuff was the same, some stuff um, was changed. You know, it, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt, but, um, but it was important. Now, her design was changed from previous versions, combining some elements from past uniforms. Um, the top and pants of her uniform are similar in design to her red and white uniform, but now colored pink instead of red and has the familiar Saturn logo. She was initially torn between her two fellow founders romantically after she was left canatotic from shutting down the composite man's mind. As her mentor Avon was only able to restore her to an infant-like state, she demanded Garth, um, and it was only after he told her he needed her that she was restored to normal. Later, after half the Legion, herself included, were stranded in the past by the Emerald Eye, she inadvertently awakens and is subsequently attacked by the misogynistic telepath known as Dr. Psycho. Because they have the worst best names ever. Or the best worst names ever. I don't know. However you want to classify it. As a result of the attack, Cosmic Boy was not comatose and Psycho be destroyed barriers Avon had placed on her powers, increasing them considerably. As a result, Saturn Girl would unconsciously animate the comatose Cosmic Boy and almost married him in that state before her subconscious mind rebelled, turning Cos Cosmic Boy into Garth until she shut down the link and Cosmic Boy was properly awakened. Following Invisible Kid's resignation, she became a Legion leader and stationed Garth as part of a second group of Legionnaires on a space station known as the Legion Outpost to avoid the appearance of nepotism. This fact irritated him for some time until the three founders went on a mission together against their corrupt regime, using their identities and the Legion symbols to, to prop up his regime, um, during which they cleared the air. Shortly after, Garth proposed to her and she assented. Both of them were among the group of Legionnaires stranded in another galaxy, which was called Legion Lost, um, by a collapsing rift. During that time, Irma also created a psychic projection of apparition to stabilize Ultra Boy. Now, when the deception was discovered, it severely strained her relationship with most of the other lost Legionnaires. She resigned as leader, and soon thereafter, Garth sacrificed himself again to stop the Mad Element Lad and allow the others to return home safely. Upon their return home, her mind was strained by what had she... Oh, I'm sorry guys, I totally messed it up. Upon her return home, her mind was strained by what she had gone through and returned to her home moon of Titan to undergo psychic therapy. Universa then trapped her in an illusion where she had never impersonated Apparition. Element Lad was not a villain and Livewire had never died to prevent her from interfering as he absorbed most of the galaxy into a hive mind with himself at the center. Um, now depressed and angry, when Sensor broke her free, she used her anger to trap Universo in a similar illusion. Shortly thereafter, when she and Cosmic Boy visited Element Lad's, Lad's home planet of Trom, they found a resurrected Garth in a crystalline version of Element Lad's body recreated from electrified crystals Spark had found in place there. Uncertain of how to react to him, it was some time before they reconciled properly. And now with the 2005 revamp of the Legion, this is kind of um, one of the more popular revamps because DC Comics started hitting on all cylinders with their storytelling. Um, I think at this time, they started getting more popular than Marvel. At least I remember buying more DC comics and Marvel around this time. Um, now with the 2005 revamp of the Legion, Irma's personal history stray strayed, or no, it stayed largely the same. I'm sorry. Although her powers and those of the Titanian race have now changed drastically. The Titanians only communicate telepathically 
having lost the use of their vocal cords due to centuries of evolution. It's stated in the case of another Titanian that somehow this type of telepathy can mimic the likeness of verbal communication, rendering a mute Titanian able to make some tongue-in-cheek humor or change the tone of his telepathy according to the situation. As a result, Irma only talks by broadcasting her thoughts to her fellow Legion members. She's still able to read minds but cannot express herself in the spoken language, which puts her at a disadvantage in those situations where her telepathy is useless. I kind of like that because they made her mind so absurdly overpowered that she can't now, she, now she can't really communicate, you know, um, verbally. So if there is a situation where maybe her mind is busy with other things, maybe she can't multitask like that. Or maybe she's pushed to some limit to where she can't communicate with her teammates when she needs to. So it's, it's kind of cool. Um, Irma's appearance again changed slightly. Her new uniform is similar to her post-zero hour uniform um, in design but colored red instead of pink. The uniform is later changed again by Marissi. Um, now her uniform always reminded me of um, the people in Voltron, uh, like in the old 80s kind of Voltron. It was like red and red and white or pink and white, but it was designed in such a way that it looked like a uniform. Um, so it's it's kind of cool. Now Irma has always been portrayed as a cold, and or Irma has always been portrayed as cold. But this latest revamp further exaggerates this personality traits. She engages in emotional isolation and has a very, seri very serious introverted demeanor. This may in part be caused by shame over her muteness, which she managed to keep secret from the Legion with the exception of Lightning Lad for quite some time. In fact, Lightning Lad seems to be the only one Irma feels comfortable opening up to which is kind of a nod to their pre-crisis relationship and the basis for the revamping of their engagement. Um, now, her mother holds a high position in the United Planets Council and was instrumental in forging the current alliance between the United Planets and the Legion. Her coldness, however, is shown to hide much deeper insecurities, neglected by Lightning Lad, utterly devoting himself to the Legion cause, she always harbors feelings of inadequacy, putting all the blame on her failing relationship on her perceived lack of attractiveness, her, blank, her plain personality, and her handicap of muteness. When Ultra Boy tries to comfort her, Irma shares a moment of passion soon discovered by her teammate, of which Lightning Lad isn't informed. Lightning Lad later is made aware of her affair, putting a considerable strain on her relationship, leading Irma to avoid Garth for a time. Pressured by dealing with the increasing antisocial behavior of Princess Projectra, Irma is forced to admit her true feelings to him, including the possibility of having consumed, consummated her passion with Ultra Boy on the mind plane. <laughs> That's just the mind plane. I, I don't... Okay, we'll just let that go. Like, it is there. Using her telepathy... Irma was instrumental in locating the wraith-like form of Monel. Hearing his telepathic pleas for help, she pursued a warm relationship with Garth and kept contact with her mother, even knowing that the strained relationship between the United Planets and the Legion meant that her mother risks her career whenever she meets her own daughter. Wow. What a history, right? Like, I don't... I don't get it, but in a way I do, um, you know, like she, from what I always knew of Saturn girl, she always kind of played by the rules. Um, but she was like this cute little blonde girl, right? So having those insecurities, maybe she just saw herself as, as plain looking or unattractive. Um, I don't know. It's kind of crazy, but she was always like, I always thought she was really cute. I don't know. But what do you guys think? This is the history of her, and it seems like there's a whole lot there. So, it's crazy. But let me know. Um, like I said, leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, share. 
let me know, did I miss anything important in her history? Because I did skip over a couple things, but I just felt like maybe they weren't that important. Did I miss anything? Um, you can email me directly at b, the number four, it all at yahoo.com. Um, so b for it all at yahoo.com. Or you can send me a message on Twitter or Instagram under super deep dive. But yeah, let me know. I am anxious to hear what you guys think as well. So guys, I will end this video here um, for part one, where I'm just talking about the history. I will be back in a couple days and go over the powers, fun facts, and do my power expansion and how we can um, work on the character, what we can do with the character. Like I said, let me know what you think in the comments. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment. If you have any requests, if you have anything I missed, Please, let's have a conversation going. Um, but in the meantime, everyone be blessed, be happy, be safe, be smart. And if you're not smart, don't get caught. See you in a couple days. Bye-bye.